the first race of the season in the 2024 Ginetta GT Academy Championship is almost upon us at a sunny Alton Park circuit in Cheshire. It's Easter weekend. We've got a good crowd trackside and a good grid of these Ginettas about to hit the track. The G56 GT Academy Championship cars are notoriously tricky to handle, but they always produce good racing. And we've got a whole host of new drivers entering into the championship this year. So it really is wide open. Open. I know that's a little bit of a motor racing cliche, but it's true. We do not know who the favourites are going to be as we move into this first race of the year. So uh, it's going to be a fascinating race. Qualifying this morning was pretty tight, actually, and that bodes well uh, for the 20 minute race to come. As I said, bright sunny skies, a few light clouds well above the circuit, no threat of rain in the near future, and temperatures, ambient temperatures in the low teens. Uh, it is pretty much a perfect uh, day for racing track. Conditions looking very good as as well we've had a few cars off uh, in earlier sessions uh, today so a little bit maybe of uh, grass and dirt that's been dragged onto the racetrack but that should be well offline and of course the brilliant marshals as always doing a good job uh, of preparing the circuit between each race and uh, that means that the drivers should be able to go for it right from the word go uh, don't be fooled though into thinking that they're going to have it easy on cold tires these cars can be fairly tricky and whilst the temperature is pleasant for spectators trackside, certainly not a warm summer's day. So they'll have to be a little bit uh, gentle in the opening stages. Now you can see the crowd who are sat trackside, uh, still wrapping up nice and warm, uh, but hopefully can accept what should be an entertaining race. Uh, it is, as I said, a grid that is made up predominantly of rookies, really. Of the 16 cars, 16 drivers who qualified this morning, 10 of them entered into the rookie class, which leaves, those of you good at mathematics will already be able to tell me, uh, six uh, who are not rookie drivers, returning drivers uh, from previous seasons. But we've seen this in the past with GT Academy. It Just because you're a rookie doesn't necessarily mean that you're not gonna be uh, up near the front of the field. In fact, the three fastest drivers in qualifying this morning all rookies, just to prove that point. And they were headed by this man, Mike Taylor, uh, in the number 33 car, uh, who set a lap time of a 1 minute 51.433, and that was four tenths of a second quicker in the end than anybody else was able to go. But Mike, one of the many rookies racing, uh, as they all do, with the Want to Race team, and uh, it will be, therefore, in a way, his teammate alongside him of James Nicholas on the front row of the grid. But although they all run for the same team, they're very much out there for themselves. They want to get good results for themselves. Uh, want to Race is just the team that uh, uh, runs all of the rookies to really give them all of the support that they need uh, in order to excel in what many of them will be their first ever season of racing anything, full stop. Uh, we've had already a very entertaining Ginetta Junior Championship race, and that's very much for the young up-and-comers, the drivers moving out of karting into circuit racing for the first time. Uh, but Ginetta offers you a way to do that, even if you're no longer at karting age, so to speak, uh, no matter uh, your age, you can jump into the GT Academy Championship as a complete rookie, get all of the guidance that you need uh, from Ginetta and the Want to Race team. They'll help you with uh, driver coaching, with setting up the car as well, and uh, a great team working behind the scenes to try and prepare these drivers uh, for what, as I said, for many of them is their first ever motor race, but nothing really can quite prepare you, I don't think, uh, for this moment. You're sat on the grid, uh, the green flag lap is about to start, after which you will be off for 20 minutes of racing around, perhaps, you could argue, the most challenging circuit of the entire season. This is a championship that will follow uh, the British GT Championship throughout 2024, so from Alton Park we head to Silverstone on the Grand Prix circuit, there'll be two visits uh, to Donington Park, we'll head to Snetterton, uh, it will all finish at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix circuit in September, and in the middle, uh, they actually head to Anglesey in North Wales, not that far away in the grand scheme of things from Alton Park, uh, for the second year of the Ginetta G-Fest, uh, which had actually a couple of G-Fests last year, one at uh, Silverstone and one at Cadwell Park, just the one in 2024, and that's going to be an event that I'm really, really looking forward uh, to covering a bit later on in the year. So cars then head out on that green flag lap, as I said, last chance to try and generate some tyre temperature and prepare themselves for what should be a fairly lively race, I would imagine. Mike Taylor setting the fastest lap time in qualifying, so he starts on pole position. Alongside him, his fellow Want to Race driver, James Nicholas. Row number two, Harry Gamble. Harry was only 21 thousandths of a second slower than James Nicholas in the end, but will have to come from row number two, alongside the first returning driver, Julian Watling. 
uh, Thomas and Luke Shaw, a pair of rookies sharing row number three. And on the fourth row, two more familiar names, Amy and Emma Tomlinson, uh, will share row number four. Paul Thomas and Thomas Balfe, meanwhile, complete the top ten on the grid, uh, whilst row six is where you find Mark Elman and Peter Thompson. Mark Elman, a returning driver, Peter Thompson, another of the rookies. Mike West is next. He shares the seventh row with Ali Al Jafali. And at the back of the grid, uh, we will have Phil McGarty and Lucy Hodge. Phil, perhaps a bit further back than he should have been, really, not just position wise, uh, but uh, lap time wise as well. He was 2.7 seconds slower than Al Jafali ahead of him. Phil McGarty is in his second season of racing in the GT Academy, so should be able, hopefully, to uh, move forward from there. I can only assume that there was some sort of an issue uh, with the car, perhaps in qualifying earlier on today on board uh, with Julian Wantling then. Julian Wantling uh, in car number three, who had lap times disallowed in qualifying for, guess what, exceeding track limits. Wasn't the only one, in fairness, but uh, could potentially then have gone a little bit better than that uh, third on the grid. Mark Elman also carries one of our onboard cameras. He'll be starting from 11th place for SVG Motorsport one of two SVG cars, actually, because Ali Al Jafali, despite being a rookie driver, not racing for one to race, he's also in an SVG car. So, safety car leading them around on this green flag lap, and as you can see, they're pulling up two by two, and that's because I believe we're going to have a rolling start for this race, which is different. This is a first for uh, GT Academy. They've always had standing starts in the past, uh, but these cars can be quite tricky to get off the line again, especially for drivers who perhaps have never done a race start before and on a very narrow circuit such as Alton Park you really don't want to be uh, stalling do you because there's a very good chance you'll get collected by uh, someone behind you so a two by two rolling start is the order of the day uh, on drivers right will be the pole sitter Mike Taylor James Nicholas in the union flag liveried car number 24 will start alongside him as we prepare to embark upon another season in the Ginetta GT Academy 20 minutes of racing on the clock the lights go out and we are racing here at Alton Park very very even start at the front of the grid. Who is going to have the edge through Old Hall Corner with his nose ahead, actually, slightly is James Nicholas, and he commits around the outside line. Does he come out of Old Hall Corner with the race lead? Well, sort of. They're still side by side. Someone goes crash tracking further back, but it is going to be James Nicholas who gets the advantage as they drop down through Dentons and into Cascades. It looked as though Mike Taylor was actually uh, under threat for second place as well. Did he get back in line? I'm not so sure. Julian Watling here we're on board with uh, trying to take advantage of that as well. Uh, no, that's Harry Gamble's second, isn't it? So the pole sitter down to third already. But these were the three who were covered by only four tenths of a second in qualifying. They're in a completely different order uh, from that which they started the race already. But uh, they should be reasonably evenly matched as the 20 minute race goes on. So despite one car bouncing over the grass at the start of the race, they have all made it safely through the first half a lap or so. Hopping over the curbs, not taking half as much curb as the juniors were earlier on. These cars with their extra bit of downforce running a bit lower to the ground, stiffer suspension. It's not the fastest way necessarily through the Britain chicane. Uh, where we have lost, have we not? Mike Taylor. I do not see the pole sitter in that group because this is the fight now for third position. Gareth Thomas in the 77 has got to the front of the group. Julian Watling were on board with in behind. Uh, but I did not see Mike Taylor in that picture as they dropped down through Britons. I'm prepared to be wrong. We'll find out in a moment, I suppose, as they come through towards the end uh, of the opening lap of racing. But through Druid's corner, they come a big gaggle of cars in the middle of which is the familiar green and gold number 88 there, Mark Elman, who is running just inside the top 10, I believe. Yes, yeah, so there we've got 24 and 23. And yes, Taylor has dropped to the back of the uh, queue. So I don't know whether he's got a car drama or he's been off the road again, but it's two for the lead now. And then everybody else is trying to steal that uh, bottom step of the podium away from each other. I think at the end of the opening lap, it will be that number 77 then, uh, which uh, has that third position. Gareth Thomas, then a bit of a gap back to Julian Watling, the blue and white car in fourth. And he is feeding the pressure right now from number 21, Luke Shaw. There are the leaders, though, dropping downhill through uh, Cascades Corner. And it is uh, Nicholas leading the way. Taylor has not yet made it to the line as off goes Gamble at Cascades. Drifts wide uh, mid-corner, picked up some understeer and goes grass tracking, digs up a load of dirt. He's done well, actually, or maybe has been lucky, I should say, not to damage the front of the car. There is Taylor. Now, there's no damage. 
no obvious damage anyway. I don't see any smoke emanating from the car. And he seems to be going at race speed. So that would suggest maybe he's had a rotation somewhere as opposed to a more serious incident. But he's a long way back. The rest of the pack are at Shell. And he's only now going through Old Hall Corner. So that has uh, certainly cost him a lot of time. And taking him out of contention in this race, you would imagine. Oh, an optimistic little look of the inside uh, for Balf there. It's one of the more striking liveries on the grid, and it gets a great run out of the Britain chicane uh, to pull alongside Mark Elman. Now, this will be the outside line heading for the Britain uh, for the Hislop chicane, but such a good run did he get out of Britain as that he's cleared Elman before the braking zone. So through goes Balf. Eighth position now belongs to him. In behind them is Emma Tomlinson. Amy Tomlinson is the better place of the two Tomlinsons. Seventh place at the moment. There goes Julian Watling in the number three car. So he is not only the highest placed of the returning drivers, also the highest placed uh, within the Chairman's Cup. You can tell the Chairman's Cup drivers because helpfully they've got a letter C next to their name on the timing tower. Julian Watling then twice a class leader in a way, although you score points for the overall championship based on your outright position. There's none of this scoring within your own class that you see in some championships. The rookies are perfectly entitled uh, and often do go on to challenge for the overall championship. Through at the end of lap number two then. Nicholas the leader by two seconds after that moment for Gamble. Be interested to see what uh, pace Gamble's got, if he can keep it on the black stuff. As I said, the car didn't seem to sustain any damage without off at uh, Cascades Corner. Can he close that gap back down? This gaggle, though, is where the real action is. This is 6th, 7th, 8th and ninth, And it's ninth place that changes hands there with a launch of the inside from Emma Tomlinson. That was a very spirited attack on Mark Elman, who's slipping backwards uh, in the early stages. Elman... Well, started 11th, so actually he's back to 10th. I think what happened is he had a very good start and uh, found himself perhaps a touch out of position based upon his uh, outright pace, and so now slipping backwards again. And uh, Emma Tomlinson, though, wasting no time in making what was a very, very entertaining move uh, through Cascades Corner. So as this battle rages on up at the Britain chicane, the timing screens are telling us that uh, Mike Taylor, unsurprisingly perhaps, since he was fastest in qualifying, is going pretty rapidly again now that he's uh, dealt with his early dramas. A purple sector has been set on his first sort of full flying lap as there's a bit of squeezing going on over Hilltop. Amy Tomlinson trying to deter Balf from going round the outside and not once but twice uh, gives Balf the hip check and retains the position and then uh, Balf gets a little bit wiggly out of his lops as well. Thomas not being allowed through there. Of course, Amy is well within her rights to defend the position, but uh, Balf will argue he was alongside and was then sort of edged over to the side of the track, but uh, no major contact made. The battle continues heading into Druids, which isn't really an overtaking opportunity. It's far more important to try and get the exit from this corner to maybe launch an attack into Lodge. But uh, as I said, these cars generate a little bit of downforce, not a huge amount does seem that they're struggling to follow each other really closely uh, through that part of the circuit. Now, fastest lap was initially set then by James Nicholas, immediately bettered by Harry Gamble to the tune of, I think that's about seven tenths of a second. The gap came down from two seconds to 1.3, so that checks out. And that is a fairly sizable chunk of time. You can see the front of the car, the grill has a bit of grass in it, but not, I don't think, too much. Not enough to risk any major overheating. So Harry Gamble is going to keep on pushing here. He obviously has the speed to close in on James Nicholas. But will he be able to find a way through as and when he gets there? Through the left-hander at Ireland they go. That is what a 3.8 second gap back to the third place man um, looks like. It is Gareth Thomas still in that third position. Gareth getting away from Julian Wantling on the previous lap. So third to fourth is going out. But still, it's the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth place cars that look set to produce much of the mid-race action. Uh, as they head towards the British chicane. Mark Elman is at the back of that group and almost in danger, you would say, of slipping off the back of the group. We ride on board with Elman. Hops over the curbs through the Britain chicane. Look how they all avoid that final curb because there's a bit of a crest in the road uh, on the left-hand side of the road of Britain's. If you go over the curb, which is raised again, you can ground out the uh, undertray of the car, bottom out a little bit, do some damage to the suspension, to the drive shaft. So they try and avoid hitting that car too hard. There's a move being made a bit further up there. And that would have been Balf against Amy Tomlinson again, but it wasn't in the end successful. Amy Tomlinson hanging on to seventh position overall. Second of the non-rookie drivers is uh, Amy. 
can see the black backgrounds on the numbers on the timing tower on the left-hand side of the screen, denoting the uh, non-rookies. A big hop over the curve. Uh, Druids there for Thomas Balfe, and that now releases Amy Tomlinson to attack for sixth place. An attack she does very late on the brakes into Lodge Corner, and Amy Tomlinson sails through in the end. There was really uh, nothing that Paul Thomas could do to defend from that one. So Amy Tomlinson up into P6, although now Thomas is trying to come back at her up the inside into Old Hall Corner. The door is always going to be slammed in his face. He hits the brakes mid-corner, gets a wallop from Balfe, and around he goes. And oh, we're going to get another spin as well. That's the number 47 of Emma Tomlinson, I think, going around in avoidance. And she gently nuzzles up against the barriers on driver's left. But that was a uh, all as a result, really, of Thomas Balfe sort of checking up mid-corner. Here it is again. And not Balfe, excuse me. Well, it was Thomas who checks up mid-corner just there and Balfe nowhere to go headbutts him round goes the number 12 and Paul Tomlinson in avoiding that contact gets onto the very wet and very slippery grass and spins back across the road thankfully through an empty bit of racetrack here's the onboard view from Mark Elber which way do you go he went left Tomlinson went right and in the end Elman got that spot on and there may be damage of course to Balfe's car as well after that headbutt that he had just served so we'll monitor that over the next few laps. But for now, as we approach half race distance, there is a battle for the lead to be enjoyed because on the previous lap, the gap came down again, only by three tenths. But this time around, it's come down by over a second because they are absolutely nose to tail, heading over Clay Hill then through the left-hand kink before Druids. And Gamble wants to get on with this, doesn't he? He's obviously got the speed. He will feel that if he gets through, he can escape. And this could be his opportunity. Nicholas takes too much speed through Druids, drifts onto the dirty side of the road. But so much speed did he take through Druids that he's far enough ahead on corner exit to get over to the inside and defend the lead at Lodge. So the uh, race leader is still going to be car 24, but for how much longer? He's wide on the exit of Lodge Corner, just clears the nose of Harry Gamble's car and again gets over towards the pit wall to defend into Old Hall Corner. Now the tight line in is usually the slower line on corner exit, but Gamble will be presented with the outside line <laughs> into Cascades along with a load more grass on the track. Has he got it done though? He's edging ahead, he's on the outside, how late on the brakes is Nicholas? Very late on the brakes is the answer. Just manages to stop the car on the apex. Brilliant battling between the two of them. And somehow it is still James Nicholas in front. That was a very, very good defence. And that was a brilliant bit of racecraft through Cascades because he knew that he'd taken too much speed into the corner and had to try and avoid running wide on corner exit, parked the car on the apex, waited for the little tap in the tail from Gamble, and that was his signal that he could accelerate away and would retain the advantage. Fantastic stuff. Now, no doubt this battling is probably allowing the third place man, Gareth Thomas, to close in. Yes, he is. Look, the white number 77 car right there almost now with the leading two. Julian Watling, the blue machine in fourth position. Fifth place then uh, is Luke Shaw. But over the hill they head then, down into the braking zone at Hislops. How many more attacks like that can uh, James Nicholas withstand? What he really wants to do, uh, all he needs to do in a way, is a oh, big moment for Gamble uh, through Hislops. All Nicholas wants to do here is defend long enough for uh, Gareth Thomas to close in on Harry Gamble in second place. Because as we saw in the junior race earlier on, if you're in second position with no threat from behind you're free to get inventive with your racing lines if you go for a move and it doesn't work it's not likely to cost you a position whereas if you've got somebody filling your mirrors you've got to think twice about going offline and that might just take the heat off the race leader here's a replay of that moment through his lobs these cars break traction so easily the super slow-mo demonstrating the car control required beautifully there from harry gamble to gather the car together He's possibly aggravated now, those uh, rear tyres slightly, you would say. Might just need to take a lap or two to cool them off. The leading group then getting closer and more numerous as well. Four of them now, you could argue, are a part of this battle with Gareth Thomas and Julian Watling closing in. You're on board with Julian uh, in fourth position. Drops down through Cascades and he loses the back of the car on corner entry as well. These cars really are a handful, and for drivers who are, have little to no experience of racing, it's a real challenge just to keep the things on the straight and narrow. But uh, despite that moment, actually, still holding on to that third, that uh, fourth place is waddling, but being caught now, definitely, by Luke Shaw. There is Luke, the number 21 car. And uh, Luke Shaw, another of the want to race rookie brigade is starting now to get within striking range of Julian Wandling. Takes noticeably more curb through the chicane there at Britain's than his pursuer. 
leaders over Hilltop. And for whatever reason now, Harry Gamble not able to harass James Nicholas in the same way that he was uh, a lap or so ago. Perhaps he's woken the race leader up now and uh, James has dug deep, found a bit more speed. He was quicker than the second place man by a couple of tenths in sector one. So just starting now to pull the gap back over a second actually as they head towards Druids once again. Third, fourth and fifth place cars come through as well. Behind there, Amy Tomlinson in sixth place is lapping slower than the cars ahead. So sixth, I think, as good as it will get for Amy, but she's 2.7 seconds now clear of uh, Thomas Balf. So that battle settled down nicely. So Gamble, has he shown his hand or does he still have an answer maybe for the race leader? Looks to me like that gap's coming back down again now. In the middle sector, it came down by four tenths. By the end of the lap, what are the lap times? A 53-4 for the leader, a 53-1-4 Gamble. So despite losing that time in sector one, Harry Gamble still quicker by the end of the lap. The gap is back under seven tenths of a second. Perhaps he did just need a, a bit of time to uh, calm down himself, calm down the rear tyres and uh, build up to a challenge in the final quarter of the race, which we are rapidly approaching. It's gone by very quickly, this six and a quarter minutes of the 20 remain. And it's still James Nicholas with the edge then over the crest and the lakeside straight. Through the full commitment left-hander at Ireland Ben, one of relatively few properly quick left-handers in the UK and uh, makes it a real challenge. There's no runoff area if you drift a fraction too wide. You'll dip a wheel onto the grass. We've had, surprisingly, a lot of rain around here over recent weeks, which means there's no grip out there. And that will be your race pretty much done. Luke Shaw, though, avoiding that, continues to chase after uh, Julian Watling ahead of him. As the leaders crest hill top and make their way down to uh, his lobs. Now, to the eye, the gap first to second is slightly bigger now than the gap second to third, which was a second and a half at the start of the lap. So uh, either... Gamble is slowing a bit on this lap, or Gareth Thomas sensing a chance maybe to get one step higher on the podium is pushing on a bit harder. Here comes the walking wounded uh, number uh, 59 of Thomas Balfe. He's got Mark Elman behind him. Balfe's car damaged after that collision that he had with Paul Thomas, who is still running in 14th position. 6.3 seconds behind Emma Tomlinson, who also, of course, was involved in that in her own way. Not involved in any direct contact with another car, but did spin in avoidance to see they're all still running, so all 16 starters are still in the race. The leaders come over, Deers leave, and that second place car is definitely slowing down on this lap, isn't it? The lead gap comes out, no doubt about it, to 1.8 seconds. And Thomas only half a second behind. So that gap is uh, virtually nothing. And is this a problem maybe for Gamble, I wonder? Uh, he certainly does not seem to have the speed now that he did two or three minutes ago. Whether there's just been another mistake that we've missed in the sectors on the last lap, sector one was okay, yeah, it was sector two where he lost the chunk of time, so could have just been a moment. Let's hope that's all it is. These cars are usually pretty reliable, so uh, it would be unlikely that he's running into a mechanical issue. Really, the issue he's running into now is that Gareth Thomas is sensing this chance to snatch second place, and I don't think he's going to be backwards about throwing a move here. Been a good race this from Gareth Thomas. Started from the inside of row number two in fifth. He's up into the top three already. It's the fifth place man, Luke Shaw, throws the car through the Britain chicane. But this is just allowing James Nicholas off the hook. And, well, who would have said about five or six minutes ago that he would enjoy a two-second lead going into the, what will be the penultimate lap of the race at the end of this one? That looks like being the case. Oh, off goes the third place man, Gareth Thomas, wide at Nickerbrook. And that will also now, of course, release the pressure from Gamble in second. And it might actually cost him third place because he's lost a lot of momentum up the hill and has dirt on his tyres. So Julian Wadling senses a chance now to gain a spot. Let's see what happens. Out of Druids they go. Julian Wadling is continuing to carry good momentum. But ultimately, I don't think quite within striking range, is he? But Gareth Thomas with a mistake at a crucial moment just as it looked like he might be about to ascend into second position. Accelerate over dear Lee, brilliant on board footage from Julian Wantling's car. So this is much closer to driver's eye level. It's obviously on the other side of the car, but it is driver's eye uh, as far as how much you can really see out over the front of the car, which is not a huge amount. Quite long uh, 
bonnets on these uh, Ginetta G56s, of course. So sometimes to judge where the front of the car is, which is always an excellent excuse if you do end up getting too close to the car in front. That's not been an issue for James Nicholas, who that sketchy lap or so aside, where it looked like he might lose the lead, has actually controlled this race pretty nicely. 2.1 seconds clear uh, from Harry Gamble in second. Now, Gareth Thomas in third position needs to get a wriggle on if he's going to have another chance to attack for that second place in the first sector of this lap. He's just under two tenths quicker than Gamble, but still, therefore, one and three quarter seconds behind. Uh, here, by the way, is what's left of the number 59 machine of uh, Thomas Balfe, who started 10th on the grid. And uh, Thomas Balfe still rolling, but definitely not going as quickly as he was earlier on, understandably, but keeping Mark Elman at arm's distance. Where does the late race drama come from, though? It's GT Academy. There's always going to be a little turning point to come. Here's a good little battle. That is the recovering number 12 machine, isn't it, of uh, Paul Thomas, battling with the number 33 uh, machine behind of Taylor. So actually, Thomas has dropped back again then, has he? I'm sure he was further up than that earlier on. Anyway, uh, trying to hold on now to 14th place from the number 33 machine behind of Mike Taylor, who, remember, started from pole position. Mike Taylor... I may well take 40 by the flag, but that's not the result he was hoping for. Right, lead us through to start the final lap of the race. Personal best lap there from Gareth Thomas in his attempts to recover from that moment at Nickerbrook a lap ago. Put one seconds back. He was about eight tenths quicker uh, last time around. So can he get second place away from Harry Gamble before the flag? This is going to be a nail-biting finish for Gamble. He's given up any hope now of chasing after James Nicholas, just wants to try and hang on to that second position. Julian Wandling, meanwhile, still the best of the GTA drivers, so the non-rookies, still the best Chairman's Cup driver by quite some way, even actually if Luke Shaw gets past him uh, on this final lap. It wouldn't cost Wandling a class victory in either of those categories. So fourth or fifth overall would be enough for him to net a couple of class wins, but obviously he'd like to finish as far up the order as he can over the kerb through the Britain chicane then over hilltop you can see damage there actually to the left front corner of his car as well some of the uh, internals of that g56 on show that shouldn't be so it's been a bit of a war of attrition out there they're all still running but quite a few of them with uh, body panels missing or not quite in the shape that Ginetta designed them and wide onto the grass again now goes Wantling so Still not making this easy for himself, is he? With uh, Luke Shaw getting ever closer in his mirrors. They head towards Druids for the final time. The race leader, though, should already be coming out of Druids and down towards uh, Lodge Corner, I reckon. And it's been a fantastic drive, this, from James Nicholas. Got the advantage from Mike Taylor off the start. Uh, managed to pull into a lead, which he almost lost mid-race when he seemed to be down on pace. The gap has come right down again on the final lap. But in the end, Harry Gamble is going to run out of time. Over Deer's Leap they go, and it is. James Nicholas, who claims the victory in the opening round of the Ginetta GT Academy for 2024. Eventual winning margin, half a second over Gamble second and Thomas in third position. Julian Wandling in fourth wins the GTA class and the Chairman's Club. But it is the opening honours in the end to James Nicholas in the first round of the GT Academy Championship.